Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 2. We are continuing with uh, the meaning of probability distribution and then we have presented uh, how to normalize a wave function at t equals 0 at in, in the initial time and then we will try to find out what will happen to the total probability distribution over time uh, in the quantum dynamics. That is exactly what we are trying to find out. Now here I would like to emphasize one more point here is that it is interesting to observe that this function we have been able to normalize, but it is not necessary that all function can be normalized. And one important requirement of quantum dynamics or quantum mechanics is that only those function which can be normalized is acceptable in quantum mechanics. So we have to be careful and uh, uh, in the next module we will find out uh, the consequences of it. So, what we have observed here is that uh, I may begin with a normalized wave function like this. This is just an example. Why I need normalized wave function? Because only normalized wave function can give me statistical interpretation. If the statistical interpretation based on which the entire quantum mechanics has been built, if that interpretation fails then there is no meaning of quantum mechanics anymore. That is why I have to begin with a normalized wave function in quantum dynamics. Second question is that uh, before we get into the second question, I will write down what is acceptable wave function in quantum mechanics. Acceptable wave function psi x, a particle will be represented by this wave function and psi x t will be considered as physically acceptable wave function or physically acceptable wave function is also called well behaved wave function in quantum mechanics if and only if psi star psi must be single valued. It has to be single valued which means that if I plot this row, this is nothing but the row density, if I plot it for a particular position I should have only one value, not numerical one value, it is a single value. For this position if I have two different values, it means that I cannot accept the wave function. The wave function which will give me a density where density I can have two different values for a particular position, then that wave function cannot be accepted. A density has to be only single valued. For a particular position I have only one probability. I cannot have two different probabilities for a particular position. For a particular position if I try to find out okay, what is the probability of finding the particle at this position, I have only single answer to this question. Second one is that not infinite over a finite range. This is also important, wave function cannot be infinite. The value of the wave function cannot be infinite. continuous everywhere which means I cannot have a wave function 
which is like this and then there is a discontinuation and then suddenly starting like this. So, this wave function cannot be accepted as acceptable wave function in quantum mechanics. Continuous first derivative it should possess continuous its first derivative should exist and it has to be continuous. And the last point is it must be normalizable. A wave function does not need to be in the normalized form, we can normalize it with the help of this equation minus infinity to plus infinity, you integrate this one, it has to be 1, total probability of finding the particle in the entire space is going to be 1 because I am dealing with only one particle, it is cloudy that is why I cannot precisely tell where the particle is, I can have a distribution of possible position that is all. So, these are the characteristics of the wave function which I can accept as, uh, as, a, um, uh, as a possible solution in quantum mechanics. Our next concern I told you that I have been able to normalize this wave function at equals 0 I have normalized it and then particle will evolve as a function of t that is all about dynamics it will dynamically evolve. When it is dynamically evolving my question is what will happen to the total probability of the particle in the entire space? What will happen to this integration if I take time derivative of it and it has to be 0 to preserve the normalization constant or to preserve the global probability. Global probability is the entire space I am calculating that is why it is called global probability. So, global probability has to be maintained uh, has to be has, has to be um, um, it cannot change as a function of time that is one important requirement of quantum dynamics and that is going to I am going to prove here. So, once this psi x t at t equals 0 is normalized it remains normalized at any later time. This is the uh, proof we are going to do this is a remarkable property of the TDSE that it automatically preserves the normalization of the wave function because always we will be using TDSE time dependence Orange equation and when we plug this in this t equals 0 wave function into TDSE we should have this TDSE should not change the total probability distribution um, uh, or, or it should preserve the global uh, uh, issue glo global probability. So, how to prove that we will begin with this first derivative of the probability distribution function we are taking with respect to time and we are going to prove that with respect to time it should not change that is why it is constant in time total probability is constant. So, we will start with this uh, uh, um, um, uh, derivative with respect to t we are taking partial derivative here because psi is a function of x and t there are two different variables that is why you are considering partial variable. Um, derivative and the way we can do that is just simple uh, product rule of the derivative operator. On the other hand from TDSC we can write down I h cut psi x t equals minus h cut by 2 m. This is the kinetic energy operator plus potential energy operator. 
potential energy we are considering time independent that is why we have space dependent component. We will for a while we will be continuously using this time independent potential. So, this is TDSE and uh, we just reorganize this TDSE a little bit we get psi x t the reason why we are considering because here as you can see this is the derivative we have time derivative of the wave function. So, that is why we have to calculate and these derivatives can be calculated from TDSE. So, I reorganize it and I get I h cut by 2 m psi x t minus I I am just writing V, V is a function of x, but I am just writing V psi x t. So, here what I have done I I will get once I take this term on this side on the right hand side I get 1 by i h cut and then I multiply like this way this i multiplied by i I get minus 1 and that is why we get this this factor. So, this is one uh, a part of TDSE then we will consider the complex conjugate complex conjugate of the above equation this is a function of x t equals complex conjugates that is why I get uh, minus sign this is also complex conjugate this is going to be plus i v so all you would like to do is that we insert this one here and we insert this one here if we do that then i can write down this part to be minus i h cut by 2 m psi star plus i v h cut psi star into psi plus psi star to i h cut by 2 m minus i v by h cut psi. What we see here is that this term and this term will cancel each other and in the end I will write down this part first which is I h cut by 2 m psi star minus psi and 
this can be again simplified as i h cut by 2 m this is first derivative psi star psi I can write down because if I consider the product rule one more time this this I can write down because one can take the first derivative first psi star x then the second derivative then again here also the first derivative and the second derivative So, what we see is that this part cancel out and remaining part is going to be this this one that is why we can write down this first derivative. Once we have reduced the equation to this one can now integrate it this is what we have got from the first derivative with respect to time and I am going to now integrate both side. If I integrate both side minus infinity to plus infinity then I get integration of this and integration of this is very easily can be obtained as 2m psi star minus psi this is minus infinity to plus infinity this is the limit we have and this part is going to be 0. The reason why this part has to be 0 is because uh, every well behaved wave function has to be 0 at the infinity. So, when I psi star will be 0 at infinity, psi would be 0 at infinity. So, in the end this part is going to be um, 0 that is the that is the basic assumption we have made every wave function which we consider in quantum mechanics acceptable wave function which will be used in quantum mechanics that has to be 0 at the infinity that is the well that is the nature of the well behaved wave function and also that is the requirement comes from the square integration uh, every wave function which can be used in quantum mechanics has to be square integrable. So, this part is 0 but on the other hand if I consider this part because it is a time derivative and integration is with respect to space I can take out the derivative out of this integration and I can write down minus infinity to plus infinity psi x t dx is 0. Note that this is partial derivative because it is acting on this function. But after the integration, I do not get any space dependence. This is going to be constant value. It does not have space dependency because we are integrating the interspace. That is why it is going to be the total derivative. This is not a partial derivative anymore. So, what we have proved right now is that the total probability is going to be always constant over the entire space. 
So, a generic view of quantum dynamics is following at t equals 0 I have some probability distribution that is rho x t at t equals t 1 time I have in another probability distribution probability distribution should change otherwise there is no quantum dynamics at t equals t 3 again probability distribution should change and that is the way quantum dynamics will evolve always as a function of time its distribution uh, the function which is representing possible position for the particle is changing. But if I continuously integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, if I integrate the entire function is going to be 1 because I have only one particle in the entire space. Here also if I integrate it is going to be 1, here also if I integrate it is going to be 1 as long as I start with a normalized wave function. So, what we have proved is that TDSE is an is, is so it is it is an equation which will naturally preserve this normalization con constant or or the to global probability, it will preserve the gl global probability dis, um, um, of the particle. The analysis which we have done so far is based on two postulates of quantum mechanics. Postulates are uh, some hypothesis based on which the entire quantum mechanics subject has been built. And Traditionally when we start studying quantum mechanics, we actually present the postulates first to understand the basic hypothesis based on which quantum mechanics will be built. But in this class, we are not following that traditional method. We are presenting it and whenever necessary, we are mentioning that this comes from a few postulates of quantum mechanics. So, whatever discussion we had so far, it they are based on two postulates of quantum mechanics and I am going to write down those postulates. It is good to know or remember this hypothesis of um, quantum mechanics. The state of a quantum particle is completely defined by its position and time dependent wave function. That is represented by psi x t on one dimension. At time t, psi star psi is representing probability psi star psi multiplied by dx. So, this part, this product gives the probability of finding a particle in the dx interval between x and x plus 
d x positions only a well behaved wave function represents a physically realizable state of the particle a well behaved wave function a well behaved wave function must be normalizable and its first derivative must be continuous and finite once a wave function is normalized it remains normalized at any later time if we use TDAC. This is a remarkable property of TDAC time dependence Oranger equation that it preserve the um, uh, uh, this uh, normalization constant. And uh, we should mention that this is not only postulates of quantum mechanics, this is the uh, consequence of uh, that postulate also because the last one is not a postulate anymore, we have proved it. So, there are consequences also we are writing. Okay. Postulate 2 and consequences we will write down here. The wave function of a particle evolves in time according to the time dependent the time dependent Schrodinger equation that is called TDAC has a simple form we have already used this postulate and we have seen two important concepts. stationary state this is something which we have learned in the previous module
uh, stationary state and superposition state. So, these are the consequences we have seen uh, when we did the variable separation method. So, it is, it is a good idea to see those postulates of quantum mechanics which we study in standard quantum mechanics class from a time dependent point of view. We will move forward and we will now uh, look at the generic, generic view of one dimensional motion of a particle which we can construct. The probability density distribution changes as a function of time when the quantum particle moves in space. That is something which we have uh, clarified in many uh, times. Each distribution, this is exactly what we are showing here. We are showing that the, the probability density distribution is changing as a function of time in this three dimensional plot. And we see that at different time distribution is changing. It is not necessary that distribution should change in the following way only. This is the only way distribution can change. Distribution can change in, in, in all possible ways. This is just one example which will clarify many important um, thing here. Each distribution can be experimentally obtained by performing many repeated measurements of the position of the particle at that given time. So, what does it mean? It means that at t equals 0 time, I have to perform many measurements and then count how many uh, counts I have for a particular position and I will be able to get a distribution function and that distribution function is presented here. So, each distribution function presented at different time, they are actually collection of let us say Avogadro number of repeated experiments which has been performed. At t equals t1, again we have to perform Avogadro number of experiments and then we will get a distribution function at t equals 2, t equals 3 and so on. That is the way we will move forward. And in module as, as I mentioned in, in, in uh, before that uh, this kind of motion of a free particle we will discuss in, in module 3. Right now we are not discussing it. So, mathematical derivation will be done in, in module 3. I will show you. But one thing is already clear here is that due to delocalized or global nature of a function which, rep which is represented by the particle, construction of a trajectory to describe the motion of a particle is not straightforward in quantum mechanics because always there is a distribution of the particle. In classical mechanics, in classical mechanics when you think about the classical mechanics or or daily life. When I say that a flight is flying from Bangalore to Kolkata, we know every position of that flight at different time and that is the precise information we always have, we always carry when you think about classical life, classical motion of a particle. That is exactly which has been shown here in this, in this figure. A particle is moving and its position as a function of time has been shown. Every time at for any time I know its exact position of the particle. So, at this point at this position the particle position is here, at this time the particle position is here, at this time the particle position is here, everything is known. So, as a result because we know everything all point by point information is known we can very easily construct a trajectory. Trajectory is nothing but flight path taken by the particle while flying or while moving that is called trajectory and any time for any classical system we can create that trajectory. Question is can I create similar kind of trajectory in quantum mechanics? 
directly? No, it is not possible. It is not possible because I do not know exact precise position of the particle. Particle can be here, particle can be here, particle can be here, anywhere particle can be and different experimental measurement will unravel the position in different position. So, because we are dealing with a global wave function, it is not possible to directly construct the trajectory. However, which means that I do not have local information in quantum mechanics. However, there are three theorems which can provide the, the concept of trajectory in quantum dynamics. So, so what is the target next target we have is that we are starting with a wave function which is global in nature which is delocalized in nature. We will transform this wave function through these theorems to get local information and once we get the local information we will be able to construct trajectories. So, what kind of trajectories we will be able to construct in quantum dynamics that is exactly what we are going to study in the, in the next class, we will meet again.